hi everyone and welcome back to your free consult every time i post about endometriosis or i talk about endometriosis you guys always ask me why do you always leave adenomyosis out so today this is your day we're going to talk about adenomyosis which is a condition related to endometriosis and i really hope you enjoy this episode stay tuned what exactly is adenomyosis adenomyosis is when we find endometrial or endometrial like tissue inside the muscle layer of the uterus and remember the endometrium is the lining of the uterus it's what we shed during our period now when this kind of tissue is found inside the muscles of the uterus we call this adenomyosis and remember this that this condition is really closely associated with endometriosis um, and endometriosis, remember, is when we find endometrial-like tissue anywhere outside the uterus, either in the pelvis, in the abdomen, in the chest, or in any other organ of the body. But for adenomyosis specifically, it's when we find endometrium or endometrial-like tissue inside the muscle layer of the uterus. Now, mainly this happens on the back wall of the uterus, and it makes the uterus really bulky. And remember, this lining of the uterus, or this endometrial tissue, secretes itself, and so sometimes it bleeds into to the muscle layer of the uterus which of course can come come with a very very painful period adenomyosis is also associated with other conditions like endometriosis like endometrial polyps which are small growths in the lining of the uterus that are non-cancerous or even with endometrial hyperplasia which is when the lining of the uterus gets really 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 thick so it's a really interesting condition quite serious can cause quite a bit of pain and i'm so glad that we're discussing it today before we do our series on endometriosis so let's briefly talk about what are the symptoms of adenomyosis. One of the main symptoms is a painful period, what we call dysmenorrhea. And this happens because the muscle layer of the uterus is being widened by the bleeding of the lining that's inside it or the endometrial tissue that's inside it. Another symptom is menorrhagia, which is heavy menstrual bleeding, which many women get when they do get adenomyosis. One of the other symptoms is infertility. Women who have adenomyosis have struggles trying to get pregnant. One of the other symptoms is painful urination or dysuria or frequent urination or any other kind of urinary symptoms because of the proximity of the uterus to the bladder. One of the other symptoms is painful sexual intercourse or what, or what your gynecologist is going to call dyspareunia and these are symptoms of adenomyosis. Another symptom is miscarriage. Women who have adenomyosis can get miscarriages or recurrent pregnancy losses. And uh, the final symptom being actual infertility, being completely unable to get pregnant while having adenomyosis. As much as adenomyosis can have a number of symptoms, majority of women who have adenomyosis actually have no symptoms at all. And this is something really important to note because this is something that may just be found incidentally on an ultrasound or an MRI. So what are some of the risk factors for adenomyosis? Well, adenomyosis is mostly found in women who are between 40 and 50 years of age. These are women who've probably had several childbirths, so repeated childbirth is a risk factor for adenomyosis. Another risk factor is having a vigorous curettage after a miscarriage. So when you're really cleaned out excessively after having a miscarriage, that could give you adenomyosis because it could make the lining of the uterus breach into the muscle layer of the uterus. Having a cesarean section in future could also give you adenomyosis, although the risk for this is small. Women who are menopausal and who receive tamoxifen therapy are also at risk of developing adenomyosis. So those are your risk factors for adenomyosis. Now, what are some of the investigations that your doctor is gonna send you for when they suspect you have adenomyosis? Well, the main investigation is an MRI. That's probably what your doctor is going to send you for. However, uh, adenomyosis can be found as well on a pelvic or a vaginal ultrasound. And so these are the two main investigations your doctor would send you for if they suspect that you have adenomyosis. Now let's quickly talk about what are some of the management options for adenomyosis. We have surgical options, 
and we have medicine based options and out of the surgical options we have three main options the first and the most definitive management of adenomyosis is actually having a hysterectomy which is having the entire uterus removed and as sad as this sounds this is one of the ways to make adenomyosis go away for good remember the women who get it are between 40 and 50 years of age so it does make sense if you have adenomyosis to actually have a hysterectomy Two other surgical options are laparoscopic myometrial electrocoagulation and this is basically where electric energy is used to make small burns inside the muscle layer of the uterus where the adenomyosis exists and to have the adenomyosis slowly die off or to cause necrosis. It's basically dying off of the adenomyosis tissue or the endometrial tissue that is inside the muscle layer of the uterus. So small punctures using electricity will be made through the muscle layer of the uterus and this will make the endometrial tissue that has gone there to slowly die off. And this is one of the surgical options. Another surgical option is laparoscopic uterine artery ligation, which is basically where we laparoscopically tie off the blood supply of the uterus through the uterine artery and so it does not provide enough estrogen for the lining of the uterus that has penetrated the muscle to keep growing and once again it slowly dies off and these are basically your surgical options. We also have medical options which are very unpredictable and unfortunately after medication is stopped the adenomyosis may return but some of the options and some that can bring good relief during the treatment are GenRH agonist therapy which is basically a hormonal therapy that allows this endometrial tissue inside the muscles to shrink. One of the other therapies is a progesterone therapy which can also allow the the lining that has penetrated the muscle to shrink as well and bring good relief in terms of painful periods. Remember, in the progesterone therapy, it can be taken in two forms. You can either have it taken orally, just so you take tablets that have progesterone, or we could have a progesterone IUD, which is placed inside the uterus that can cause, again, the shrinkage of this lining that has penetrated the muscle layer of the uterus. So the hormonal IUD can actually be used as treatment for adenomyosis. One other treatment is methanamic acid with tranexamic acid, which just helps the blood clot a little bit better and helps uh, decrease bleeding into the muscle layer of the uterus not necessarily a very effective therapy but again can be used in those who decline other therapies i really hope you understand what adenomyosis is i hope that it makes you understand better later on what we're going to be talking about in endometriosis and i really hope you enjoyed this episode and see you next time